This is The Conscious Investor presented by Nuveen. I'm here with Bill Emick, professor at Columbia University and co-author of Social Value Investing. So tell me, why did you decide to write this book? We decided to write the book because we really believe that profit and purpose can go together that you don't have to choose one or the other. And in fact, we'll go even further than that. If we look at some of the bigger problems facing the world, inequality, climate change, opportunities, the disappearance of work, automation, those are problems that are not gonna be solved by government alone, but they're not gonna be solved by the private sector alone either. So we've been researching this area for 10 years, trying to find a way that you can be efficient and do good at the same time. And I think if people have a chance to take a look at the book, they'll see we found examples from all over the world. And we think there's much more to come. So it's not one or the other, it's both. And do you have one favorite example of how this has really worked in the past? Well, we love them all. And I love New York and I'm from New York. So Central Park and, and the High Line are really close to my heart. But the one that's most amazing to me and perhaps to most people is India. You know, when most people think of India, they think of poverty, they think of streaming people, they think of Gandhi. And they don't recognize that India is the sixth largest economy in the world and growing faster than any other large economy. And in India, you see in the book, they've created a biometric ID system, which has not only made all their citizens, no matter where they are, eligible for government benefits, but it's become a bank card, bringing banking, like Citibank, to people in the most rural sectors of India. Through e-medicine with a private for-profit, Apollo Medicine, you can be diagnosed for brain problems by one of the best doctors in the world in Mumbai in your small village in northern India. To me, it's, it's almost like science fiction, it really is. But it's happening right now. There are over 1.2 billion people registered in the system using it and they you can carry that card you don't have to carry your driver's license you don't have, have to carry your proof of your mortgage all your important documents are carried on the card so you go to the bank you give them your card and they can approve you for a loan and what did they do right that allowed them all to work together well I, I, I mean I hate the phrase but that's a great question it really is the government had this idea in the 90s and from the 90s all the way into the middle 2000s, it went nowhere because they didn't have the expertise. And when Modi, the current prime minister, came in, he reached out to their Silicon Valley, to one of the strongest tech sectors in the world, and asked one of their leaders, would you come into the government a, a dollar a year and help us put this system together? And that's exactly what happened. So the backbone of the system is the private sector, which serves now India, not just American Express. And the registration was done by 200,000 entrepreneurs that they licensed into the system to actually get people registered. So it was local, international, government, private, and community all working together. And it's, it's not done. There's miles to go. But the banking sector is probably going to triple in size. The wealth of people in communities, and most importantly to me, corruption, which was a terrible problem with government benefits. I wouldn't say it's eliminated, but it's reduced dramatically. So it benefits all around. And you co-wrote the book with your former student, student and current colleague, Howard Buffett. So why did you guys call it social value investing? So it's a long story. I'll try to make it really short. But Howard's grandfather is Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, value.